Welcome back to Boston's Banter with the sports are wicked and the banter is pisser. I'm your host, Frank the Bank. Frank! Frank! <laughs> What's up, dude? Dude, you're a, you're a lot. Uh, this a, guy's a, I thought he got eaten last right, episode. I'm all right. What, I'm all right. What's going on here? Sorry I, I'm a little I, late, I, man. I got away from him. I dude, got away from him. I was him. putting posters out. Man, anybody seen Frank, dude? So I'm glad to see you're okay, <laughs> I'm doing buddy. all right. I'm doing all right. Well, I'm glad I'm here. Episode 11, K- huh, Frank? Que lava la cava. Here I house. am. What's going on, bro, DiMaggio? Nothing much, Brogan Mankins. Oh, I like it. I like it. like Let's it, go. man. Let's go, baby. We got a good episode. We're going to do our draft special today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, how we pick our draft order in our league. So we're going to have a fun show today. It's going to be great. Uh, why don't we just jump right into Wicked Piss News. Uh, Red Sox update. Unfortunately, they're three and a half games back mm-hmm. right now. So they've, uh, they've fallen off. We actually... Uh, Again, blew another ninth inning save. It's yep. been uh, it's been really bad for the bullpen. We've been talking about that all year. Um, since the All Star break, we have the worst bullpen ERA in Major League Baseball. So it's been unbelievable. So we've <sighs> talked about it even before the trade deadline, right? Before the All Star break, and it's been even worse since the All Star break. So unfortunately, you know, I we mean, keep falling back. You, you read something like that, and it just shows you, you know, getting primed, getting ready for the for the playoffs. You know, they're third in the ALE, seven games behind the Yankees. That's not good, Frank. I mean, come on, man. We're four and two in our last six. So if yeah. they can just kind of keep above that five hundred level, I mean, who knows what could happen? But like you just said, with the worst bullpen in the MLB, that's not going to help out yeah, anything. Yeah, since the All Star break, has been real bad with that. With that, and we've talked about it for almost the whole season. Right. It's, you, it's especially my, you and my dad have been talking a lot about it. You All know, we brought time, that up yeah. on one of the other episodes, yeah, and it's like they just they need to focus on that apparently next season. But hey, if we can make the playoffs with that, that's a statement right there. I mean, they're already, again, they're overachieving. I think they're playing better than anyone thought at this point. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. If they don't make the playoffs, they don't make the playoffs. But they have a young, good nucleus. And I think if they get some bullpen help next year, this team could be a team. Uh, absolutely. With, you know, absolutely. So, and they play tonight, don't they? They play at like 7 o'clock yeah. against the Diamondbacks. Yep, or something they have like a that. game tonight. Yep. So hopefully they can win that. And we'll we, ha- we have a tough schedule. And that's part of the reason why the bullpen's been. The ERA's been so bad in the right. bullpen, but yeah, it's been a it's been a rough schedule. Man, what's up with James Paxton? Didn't we just trade for him? Uh, yeah, no, he got injured. He got injured. <laughs> no, right away. Yeah, I know. It's, you know, it's not you know, unfortunately. But talking about, uh, let's moving on to the Fright Sox. I mean, White Sox. <laughs> um, we talk about them every episode because it's just kind of comical at this point. But um, I don't know if you've seen l- the news this week. So the beginning of the week. <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> they uh, they've been eliminated from playoff contention already. So. At the time, there's, there was still 38 games left in their season. So they could win 38 straight games still not and not the make the playoffs. Wow. So that's just to give you an idea. I mean, you know what I mean? That's, that's crazy. So <laughs> that's, that's I mean, sitting at 31 and 97, I mean, I would hope so. I mean, even with 38 wins it going was, on to that. It's just unbelievable. Like, I, I don't know where they're going to end up for, like, the overall worst record, but they're going to be one of the, you know, Either first, second, third, fourth, fifth, uh, worst teams in history. So it's 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 looking that way. Anyway, I wish so. Ben Intendi wasn't on that team. Yeah, I feel bad for him. But <laughs> Me too. Anybody on that team, you know, unfortunately, it's just it's just been real bad. But so. Frank, two and four in their last six, though. I mean, I know that's I know, like that's good for them. That's good for <laughs> that's them. You know them. what I mean? So after having losing streaks of twenty plus, right? And 14, you know what I mean? Like it's like. It's been unbelievable. So, so I, I'll, I guess two and four in the last six. This new manager's doing something good, man. Yeah, yeah. One of the last cool MLB thing I saw this week, and I don't know if, if you've seen it, but it's it has to do with the Yankees. So boo, and it has to do with Babe Ruth. So also, you know, the uh, curse, all that. But Bambino, he, there is an auction right now for his jersey from the World Series 1932 Game Three when he called his shot, hmm. called his home run shot. That auction of his game one jersey from the game he called the shot so one of the you know pivotal thing in, in major league right. baseball history right and it's uh the bidding is already over 15 million for this jersey okay so just to put that in like retrospect the highest sports memorabilia or sports card ever was the 52 mantle and that sold before now they're saying this could reach thirty million. So the, was the was the mantle <laughs> wow. fifty two tops uh, graded? That sold for twelve point six million. Okay, that okay. wasn't that long ago. Yeah. The other second best thing in actual jersey was from the Last Dance MJ's jersey. Okay. That was just over ten million dollars. So that was that was a while ago now too. But I just thought that, that was really kind of cool to see. It's on our Heritage Auctions, I believe. So make sure you get your bid in this weekend. You know, I, know you, I know you're gonna jump up to thirty. <laughs> yeah, million yeah. I'll, real I'll, quick. I'll throw that in the man cave. I'll put it right next to the Stephon Gilmore jersey. <laughs> it's just cool to see. I mean, it's just kind of crazy to see like you know something that old. I mean, it's coming up on a hundred years. Of yeah. That. In eight years, it'll be a hundred years. So, I mean, it's just. I mean that. 
such a cool thing that he called the shot and then actually did it. It was 1932, man. That yeah. was the year before my grandfather was born. Yeah, that's just, it's insane. So they're saying that could jump up to 30 million. It's at 15. I think it ends Sunday night. So, you know, something cool to, I always like to find the cool stuff like that. So that's really all I got for that. I mean, I think you had a little basketball. I know we were talking about MJ there, but let, what else you got for basketball? So basketball, some, I mean, not really NBA news, but Team USA news. Uh, Steve Kerr, after just winning gold in the Paris Olympics, he's stepping down as head coach and yeah, so I was just going to say, us Celtics fans, we're kind of glad to see that. <laughs> so Steve Kerr, obviously, throughout this the uh, Paris Olympics, you know, he, he's benched Jason Tatum. He, twice. He, 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 twice. He didn't play Drew Holiday, Derek White, and Jason Tatum on the floor together once. once all the Olympics. This man was just not just benching Celtics players and not playing them. You had the likes of Joel Embiid. Tyrese Halliburton, guys like that just not getting any minutes. And he wanted to say it was all a science, you know, due to like who we're going up against. No, I don't want to hear it, man. All those guys are top tier athletes, man. I don't know what it was if the Celtics really gave you a whooping during the regular season you were feeling some type of way, but hey. I think got- that's why it might be part of the reason he stepped down because he took a lot of heat for that. And the Embiid thing, dude, he sat Embiid one game too. It's like he did- perennial I- all-star MVP Embiid. It's like, the, yeah, two years removed from the NBA, you know, two still a season right. removed from it. So it's like, you know, he's the best player in the league and he can't get a minute. Yes, like, dude, it's crazy. So as of right now, it's looking like Eric Spolcher or Tyron Lue, both his assistants in the Olympics, are looking to step up and be the new head coach of Team USA. So, you know, he, he actually, but I will say this about him. He's actually one of five NBA coaches to not only just win a uh, championship as a head coach, but also win gold with the Olympics. Yeah, so. I mean, I, don't, I always liked him as a player. I thought he was a good coach. I just, I didn't know why... Again, Tatum's made three straight first team all NBA right. teams. That means arguably a top five player in the NBA is what usually that people, you know, say that is. Right. Now I know it goes by position and guard and forward and all that jazz, but I mean, let's be real. Like he should have been in there. Made no sense. He sat two full games. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. It's like we've talked about Jason Tatum in the finals, how he could, should have won finals MVP. I mean, love that Jalen yeah, Brown got it. Yeah. But he led in every category in the finals, scoring, rebounds, assists, and my man is not playing in two of the Olympic games? That's just, even if he didn't make the finals, he's first team All-NBA three right, right, years right. Well, that's yeah, Exactly. It's so like, that's insane to me. I, I, and like you said, he should have been, or could have been, it's the first time in history that he led in those categories and not got... The MVP of the, I mean, again, Jalen Brown tore it up and he was definitely, you know, right, right, we, we needed so. them both. You know right, what I mean? I absolutely. get it. Absolutely. It's just to not play like in two full games is just nuts. I, I don't get it, man. But hey, he's stepping down, so we'll see who the new uh, Team USA head coach will be. Yep. But moving on, Frank. Uh, yeah, NFL stuff. Let's move on to NFL. Yeah. All right. What do you got for NFL for me? So, Jaden Daniels, rookie. Bo Nix, rookie. You know, we kind of expected Jaden Daniels to be named the starter, which he's going to be for the Washington Commanders. I mean, if you look at their quarterback depth chart, it's behind him is Marcus Mariota and Jeff Driscoll. So I think we kind of knew he was going to be the starter. But interesting here over in Denver, Bo Nix, you know, the, the rookie quarterback out of Oregon, he was at one point during tra- uh, the OTAs and training camp. He was third string behind Jared Stidham and Zach Wilson. Yeah. And I yeah. really thought that he was going to sit a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong. Stidham and Zach Wilson are not no, premier. They're, they're, <laughs> they're not studs. <laughs> you ain't going to be learning from them a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same that. time, it's like I, I didn't think Bo Nix was going to be the starter, but Sean Payton's throwing him the reins. And he's actually the first rookie Broncos quarterback since John since Elway, Elway. Yeah, Elway to be named the starter for the season. It's awesome. I don't know if you caught some of the games. The kids looked unbelievable. Yeah. He no, had, in the preseason, he has looked pretty good. Seven drives. As the starter. Yep. Do you know how many scoring drives he led out of those seven? Seven. Six. Six out oh, of okay, seven. Okay. They scored points. Six out of seven, they scored points. Yep. He His completion percentage was 77%. He was the All right. second highest in the whole NFL for any quarterback that had 20 or more throws in the preseason. He had 30 throws. He was 23 so, of 30. I didn't look that in depth, but man, yeah, just sharing those good. numbers, you know Sean Payton was going to hand him the reins. He, he looks I mean, so good. <laughs> he ain't Paxton Lynch, right? <laughs> no. I mean, the, Bo Nix played six years in college. I know, dude. He's six. Like, he's like 27. He's, he's so, 25. Yeah, but still, it, it, I think that helps him. I think, again, he had the COVID year. He had the right. redshirt year. So six years in college. He's been in college a lot. He had a lot of games under his belt. He's actually looked... 
extremely good. I watched the games. They looked great when he was out there. Right. Yeah, so, no. And for the most part, for that's, him, that's awesome. No, know? that is a great move. And no interceptions either. That's He's, what I'm saying. No bro, interceptions. I was just literally just going to say that. No interceptions for this man. So now he's a starting quarterback for the Broncos. We'll see how they do. Yeah. Same with Jaden Daniels. I wanted New England to get him, but I am happy with Drake May. So both those guys, we're going to see two rookies starting going into the season. Yeah, Jaden Daniels looks nasty. Yeah, he, he does. Looks, he, looks, he looks like the real. I, I heard somebody say that let's get ready to see the second coming of 2012 RG3. I said RG3, that's kind yeah. of a curse. Bro, homeboy had a great yeah. rookie season, but he got hurt right after that. Yeah, he won the rookie of the year over Andrew yep. Luck, actually. That yes, year, he but did. He was, was a, he was the second overall pick, too, know, right after Andrew I Luck. I know. And RG3 looked great, but then, yeah, his ankle it never healed right. And like, right. he just had it went downhill after that, unfortunately. But Jaden Daniels looks like the real deal, too. So he's, we'll see what happens we'll with the Heisman that, yeah. winner, bro. Yeah, we'll he see what happens animal. with him. Uh, another starting quarterback that we just saw. Um, there was obviously, we talked about a little either Aiden O'Connell or Minshew. And it looks like Minshew, they're going to go with Minshew, which I think is probably good for. For for like Devonte Adams and stuff, Minshew likes to to throw it around. He's like he's a gunslinger. He's oh, he gunslinger. he's got grit to him, man. I mean, the guy was a sixth round pick in 2019. And all he's done is come in and step in for teams and provide. I mean, I'm not gonna say he's led teams to the playoffs, but yeah, I remember no. when I remember in 2019. When Nick Foles got hurt, we talked about that, you know, oh, signed that yeah, big money yeah, contract. Yeah, yeah. He came in, and then it was becoming Minshew Mania Minshew his rookie Mania, season. Yeah. He won, like, four straight yeah. games. You know, he's making highlight plays, running around. Yeah. After he left Jacksonville, he went to Philly for a season. Jalen Hurts got hurt in uh, week in. 13. Every time he's come in, he's played well. 158.3 passer rating in that game. On blue. And then he, and then last year with the Colts, Anthony Richardson Colts. got hurt. Yeah, he he comes Colts. in. He actually led them to a seven and six record as a yep. starter. And the Colts finished nine and eight. They just fell one spot short of the playoffs. Oh, I mean, he played. He's played good. You know what I mean? Every time he's been asked to play, he's come in and played good. So, but glad he got the start. I mean, give Aiden I like O'Connell Gardner. a little bit more time to develop. I like. I like Aiden for the future. I think right. he's pretty good. But let Minshew come in, do his thing, and see what he can do with this team. That'd be cool for him. And know? they they did announce that you know he was a Pro Bowler last year, but. <laughs> I mean, it was his first career Pro Bowl, but at the same time, he was an alternate. So I, yeah, I really no, hate I bringing know. those up. That's, you know what I mean? Fine. Yeah. And uh, we had another starting quarterback. Uh, some stuff to talk about with another starter this this week. What do you got for me? So, Tua Tago Val Loa, you know, our rival in the AFC. is quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. So, you know, him and his head coach, Mike McDaniel, they're they're pretty close. You know, they, they, they definitely got some chemistry, and they seem like they vibe pretty well. They do but vibe good. To his first two seasons in the NFL, though, were not like that, and it was not positive at all. He had Brian Flores, our former D.C., yep. as his head yep. coach. Now, he was on the Dan Lebertard show this past Monday, Frank, and these are the remarks that he made about Brian Flores. <laughs> Quote, unquote, he called him a terrible person, and then this is what he said about him. To put in the simplest of terms, if you woke up every morning and I told you that you suck at what you do, that you don't belong doing what you do, that you shouldn't be here, that this guy <laughs> should be here, that you haven't earned that right. So we saw two of his first two seasons. I don't know if you remember this, but I remember he would be starting in games where they'd be winning, and then he'd get pulled for Ryan Fitzpatrick in yeah. the middle of games that yeah. he was winning. So that never sat well with me. I used to even think, Brian Flores, what are you doing, man? It was very strange. It, I, I, yeah. You got to feel for the guy. You well, of mean? course. And You're then not going to play well if someone's telling you you're terrible. <laughs> right. And then and then he comes in and says this. And, and then now you have somebody else referencing Mike McDaniel. Yep. Come in and tell you, dude, you are the best fit for this. You are accurate. You are the best whatever. You are this. You are that. We need you. Yeah. So how would that make you feel listening to one or the other? You see what I'm saying? So basically, he builds was, up his confidence. Right. That, so that's as he should be. You know what I mean? And if you look at his first two years in Miami, Frank, he had only 27 touchdowns and 15 INTs. And he yep. was, like I said, got pulled numerous times, even in games he was winning. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I don't get that, bro. What is he calling in the closer, Ryan Fitzpatrick? <laughs> like, <laughs> Fitz magic. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, one of those games he did get called, and it was against the Raiders, dude. He was getting his beard tugged, and he, like, threw the ball down the field for a yeah. first down. Hey, he was a good backup guy, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he was. Played, he started when he needed to. Definitely a journey, man. But, yeah, so, I mean, Tua, you know, he's in a better state, obviously, but those were some interesting remarks. And then Brian Flores responded with, you know, I wish Tua nothing but the best. What else can he say? I mean, he's, yeah, you should say that <laughs> yeah. at that point. You don't expect that to come out anyway, but that's just like, you I mean, what he said those what He said doing? those words hit him hard, and honestly, I'm glad Tua said it sh that. It should have hit him hard. He right. shouldn't act like that to anybody. No, right? especially a rookie, the guy you just drafted with the fifth overall pick. <laughs> you know what I mean? On, they're on your team. You want you want your team to do well, Not first of all. Bring them, bring them, bring them up. down. What do you think is going to happen right. to your team? Bring them up. No, don't bring them down. But, hey, that's Brian Flores, he ain't with us no more. He's with Minnesota. Hopefully he's not doing that to the defensive backs and all those guys over there. <laughs> but, yeah, moving on to, uh, you know, some more contract stalemates. Oh, we got yeah. C.D. Lamb and the Cowboys. Now, supposedly, 
they're close to a deal, Frank. Jerry Jones said on Tuesday that the sides are having, quote unquote, promising talks. <laughs> I don't believe a word Jerry says. <laughs> Not ever. The guy is just out there. The guy seems like a space cadet half the time. He is. And I think it's interesting, too, where you knew this could have been a focal point of your team where you, you have to get this guy paid to remain a cowboy. I mean, he, he's filthy. He's like I said, we talk about it every week almost. He's arguably the best receiver in the league along with Tyreek Hill he's and Justin unbelievable. Jefferson. Unbelievable. Like, the guy just, I don't understand how you don't even make that a priority starting the offseason. Well, they do this all the time. Right. They, they don't have Micah Parsons right. signed to a long-term deal. Dax, we've been talking about Dax contract for like two or three years at this point. Yeah. He's not signed. Something feels and like now you're now C.D. Lamb, it's like, what? Micah's one of the best in the league. C.D.'s top two in the league. Right. I mean, I know, I'm not saying Dax top two guy. Top ten. But he's pro- easily a top ten, top five guy. I mean, right. you could even say top five and, and with his regular season stats are great. Yeah. I mean, if you talk about the playoffs, we're talking bottom, a whole nother, yeah, bottom five. Another story. <laughs> but at, at the fact that this keeps happening yep. is just wild to me. You know what I mean? It's just crazy. And it happened with Zeke, too, when he was kind of in his prime. Oh, yeah, Zeke, too. He, yeah, he didn't Zeke, get the contract. Yeah, so it's right. like Jerry's getting these guys. They're balling and yeah, everything. Yep. Oh, but we're having promising talks. Man, come to New England, CD. We'll appreciate you, buddy. Yeah. We'll, we were going <laughs> to give IU $32 mil a year. We'll give you $42 mil a oh, year. that's easy, money. Let's go. <laughs> come on down. We need you, bud. <laughs> we'll bring it on in. So that's really all I got for uh, football stuff. So moving on to the Foxborough Focus. We'll keep it in the football here. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. So Foxborough Focus, Frank. Now, I know this guy is no longer with the Patriots. You know, we're going to miss him, Matt Judon. So he's with the Falcons now, like we talked about last week. You know, the Patriots sent him there for a third-round pick. So he is not currently seeking an extension with the Falcons. He's going to work for it, he said. He's going to play out this season, make the last $6.5 million he made from the contract he got with the Patriots in 2021, and then he's going to become an unrestricted free agent. Now, the reason for him doing this is he wants to show the Atlanta Falcons that who he is with them. They know him as a football player, but they don't really know him as the man. So they, they he, like, he actually said this recently. They really know my previous resume. I can't really demand or ask for anything I haven't worked for. And that's where I've been my whole life. I'm going to work for it. So he, he wants yeah. to show that he's just not going to come into Atlanta. Oh, I'm not playing like Hassan Reddick when he was, you know, yeah, with the Jets. Yeah, he hasn't played yet. He didn't, show up to, he didn't even show up to a practice. That's what I'm saying, bro. So I actually kind of respect Judon for saying that, but it also hits me I, in the I field. was going to say the same thing. Like, I, I respect him as a man for saying it, but why don't you give us that right. <laughs> opportunity? But I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, at the same time, if he was willing to do this, Elliot Wolf, let him play out that last season, man. I mean, hopefully that third well, round pick. You could pick. see there, were, there was arguments, and he did not want to practice and be out there for the right. Patriots without a contract. Contract. Right. And I mean, if you flip it around, he proved what he could do for us before he got hurt. Oh, absolutely. So I think that we should have respected it and actually gave him a, a, a very fair offer. You know what I mean? To make a say, because you right. can tell what kind of guy he is. And he's tried to bring people in, to New England. <laughs> he was you know, our and then other we just GM. Let him go. I know. I just, <laughs> it's just crazy to me. And it, but it's just to see him like playing on this one year when we could have kept him for one year. But. I don't know. I wish we just. I wish we did something to keep him because you know we're gonna miss his sacks, his leadership. Right. You know what I mean. Especially after we lost, we talk about every week. Barrymore's uh, gone too. Barmore, so it's like, yeah. It's like, ah, oh, man, that's that's a tough one to hear. It, it really is. And then, like I said, when I hear that, and I'm thinking this dude's gonna be playing now with Atlanta. Now they're starting to call Atlanta Super Bowl contenders. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. No, sorry, no, they, they, Amani, they, they're not they, winning the Super Bowl. I, dude, on ESPN, a few of them really were calling them Super Bowl contenders. You want to put a bet in with me? You hit me <laughs> up. We'll just, let's do something. Like Keith lost his money, you gotta lose your. Beat. So, Judon, he has as many double-digit sack seasons in the last three seasons as Atlanta has had since 2012. Wow, that's crazy. So that shows they had a need there for a pass rusher. It's just great for them. I mean, he's such a leader, and he's so good. Like, well, that was such a good move for Oh, them. great move. Put him on a line with Grady Jarrett, David Onyemata. Mind you, we've talked about the likes of the safeties. They just brought in Jesse Bates oh, yeah. and Justin Simmons. And yep. they got A.J. Terrell, too. Terrell, yeah. they, they got a nasty – and he just got a huge he extension did, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, he got extended, yep. So, you know, that's, you know, it's, it sucks that he's he's not with us anymore, but at the same time, he is showing that he's going to be playing that last season for Atlanta, and we'll see if he goes back to it. Who knows? Maybe he'll come back to New England. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows, though? We'll see what happens. But, hey, Judon, we're going to miss you, buddy. Yeah, I already do. <laughs> you know, going off from the defense to the offense, so we're getting close to the season and everything, and Patriots head coach Gerard Mayo, you know, it was starting to look like Jacoby Brissett. He had the starting job just, just taken. You know, he is going to be the number one starter week one. No, no, no. Gerard Mayo, he actually does not know who QB1 is going to be, and he will not know until after Sunday's preseason game against the Commanders, Frank. I don't know. Just just stop Brissett. Get us a high draft pick. Like, don't ruin Drake May. He's shown, like, right. in that preseason game, he looked good. 
I, I sit this kid this year. I just I sit him. Like, yeah. I, I feel like we don't have a team to throw a rookie in there and just throw him to the wolves. I just feel like the, I, I I love the Pats and I'm always a die. You know I got a tattoo. Right, like of course. I, mean, I you know it, you got to give this kid time to develop. No, a- absolutely. Very. You only have 26 starts in college. I mean, right. Let him develop. So the way I look at it, though, Frank, so it's like, yeah, we definitely got to let him develop, and a lot of people forget that there are likes of quarterbacks in the league from previous years. Pat Mahomes didn't start his rookie season. Lamar exactly. Jackson didn't start his rookie season. But I get it. Those guys had some some seasoned veterans ahead of them, which, uh, yeah, Jacoby Brissett is one of those. But, again, he is not looking good in preseason at all. He's not the answer. We've been Se- talking about that forever. 17 yards total in the th- in the two preseason games. Mind you, he's only played in like a total of four drives, but only 17 yards. Mind you, we all saw that pick last week where he forced it into coverage in the end zone, in the red zone, which we never want to see that. And then you got Drake Go May- sign Ryan Tannehill or something. Well, he's out there. Do he, something well, different. That, well, that's the thing. Who knows? It could be a surprise. We could see him maybe get cut at the end of the, at the, end of the preseason. That's just wild. But, I mean, what are you going to do? Who are you going to throw out there? Well, I'm Joe saying, Milton. well, I'm saying if they did sign Tannehill, but with Drake, I love Tannehill. With there. Drake Somebody May's numbers though, through the two preseason games, Frank, eight for 14, 66 yards, and he had that rush touchdown, the only touchdown of that game last Listen, week. Listen, there there's a lot of talk about him, Drake, not being good in practice or the OT, anything. But then he came out this last last preseason game and, and looked better than anybody Throwing else on the down roster. the field with comfort, bro, going he through looked, his reads and everything. He looked everything. good. He looked real good, and that was the best I've seen him look. Now, yep. could it have been the defense was, you know what I mean, not as good as the other ones? I don't know. And I know the Patriots defense is good, so maybe that's why he hasn't looked good in OTAs, but they're saying Milton outplayed him, and then yeah. Milton outplayed, outplayed him in the first preseason game, but that last preseason game, Drake may look like he could be a starter, honestly, yeah. but again, I don't want to ruin If you look at how many people are taken early and then just thrown in, there's a reason why we had the third pick. We only won four games yeah. last year. Okay, we yeah. won four. And I don't even know if we're going to win four this year. So, Yeah, the, we are. We're winning six yeah, or seven. Okay, let's put some money on that. Let's <laughs> we, put some cash we'll, on I don't it. want to get in trouble, man. We'll talk about that later. Nah, yeah. <laughs> put your money where your mouth is, Keith. All right. <laughs> but no, for real, I, I would, if it's me, you have a, a one, two, three kind of pick for a quarterback, the top three quarterbacks, whatever it is, you got to ease them in. Yeah. Some of these guys are, like, literally done after a year or two of just getting right. torn apart, you, right. like, literally. Well, Mayo Mayo has stated that he's seen the, you know, May is progressing and everything in practice through the games and all that. He comes in early, leaves late, and he's just getting better every day, Mayo I like said. it. I like it. I actually did a, a, fun, <laughs> I did a football break the other day, which is, like, car, sports cards, and I got my first Drake May autograph. Nice. So when I get it in the mail, I'll, I'll show it to people. It's, it's, it's not in his Patriots uniform. It's in this Carolina one. Still, North Carolina, man. But, uh, That's cool. UNC, so. Yeah. But yeah, man. So you know, we got the uh, Commanders coming up this Sunday, uh, eight o'clock, last preseason yeah, last game. Preseason that's going to lead us into the cuts to cut down to the fifty-three, and then going from there, we'll be getting ready for the Bengals. The Bengals, but let's go. I can't wait, man. Football is back, Frankie. I love it. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's move on to uh, lava round. So this, we're going to talk a little bit about how we are doing and how we have done our draft order for fantasy football. My league's been around a little bit longer than Keith's. It's been around for a while, but it's uh, we've done some fun stuff over the years. And these, I mean, obviously you can incorporate whatever you guys want and uh, send us messages, comments on how you guys determine your draft order for fantasy. We'd love to hear it. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll try some of your ideas too. And Keith's got some cool ideas for his too. So absolutely. Um, a, a couple of that we've done over the years, and I guess I'll start with one that we've both done is is the three point contest. That was oh yeah, that, that was, was fun. fun. We'd like to do active stuff sometimes like that, which is great. Um, I ended up winning. I got seven out of ten threes. We went around, you know, running yeah, around. Yeah, I believe that. I got third, but whatever. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, that's something that, that was a good one. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's three point contest. You know, yeah. whoever gets out there shoots like Steph Curry, you get to choose your pick and everything. Oh, I like I doing that a lot. I, I think down the road I might do that again. Actually, that was fun. Yeah, I, I like that. One of the things that we've done twice in my league is we've made a casino trip. I'll, I'll either get a room or a suite or something, and uh, we've done slot tournaments. So we have every guy in the league bring an extra twenty bucks. You put it. In, we try to find either a two fifty machine or a three dollar machine max bet. You put in the two, the two twenty dollars. You hit hit the button eight times. That's your that's your that's your twenty bucks. And whatever you have to print your ticket. If you have zero dollars or sixteen cents, whatever it is, you print it. I write your name on the back. That's your ticket. So whoever has the most gets the choice of that where was, they're that picking. That was fun. I remember John, that. John, the last time we did it, like four years ago or three years ago, we went to Encore. It was a lot of fun. And uh, John won eighty dollars on his on his eight spin. <laughs> oh, yeah, so he got f- first pick, and he won eighty, 80 bucks. bucks. So he was he was pumped. <laughs> yeah, there was absolutely. a couple of people above the twenty, but most of us were obviously lower than twenty. Oh yeah, I, I think I had like 
the last option on one of those years. So I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. They got, got it's like all luck. It was it was still cool to make the trip, and obviously we did the draft in the suite. That the was suite sick. was unbelievable, yes, and then we, we had such a good time doing it in Foxwoods uh, and Encore. Oh, uh, both of them were great. Yeah, we, we did it at both Foxwoods and, and Encore, like you said. So that was a really fun one. Um, we did the Wonderlick test, which <laughs> I thought <laughs> that, that was, was hilarious. interesting. <laughs> so if you know at the NFL uh, Combine for the rookies. They take a general knowledge test. It's 50 questions. It's called the Wonderlick test. So I did, and they have 26 minutes to answer that. So we did the half test. We did a 25 minute, uh, 25 question Wonderlick test, 13 minutes. So we had two computers side by side, and two people would be on it, but the rest of us would be behind them yelling in each other's ears like, oh, such oh a that's distraction. A wrong, wrong answer. Nope, nope, it's C. No, it's not B. And like, so the whole time you're like, oh, and you have, you're in a time limit. So, and obviously there's, you know, a few beers involved and stuff. So that was, was uh, my first year in your league, actually, the year we did that. It was your house, uh, yes. the, the, the uh, old uh, house you Yeah, had. in Buzz's Bay, yeah. Yep, so yep. it was a lot of fun. That's a, that's a cool way to do it, something like that. And again, it has to do, it, it's related to, to football in general. Yeah, so no, that's cool. cool. I actually considered doing that too with, the, you know, down the road as well. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Oh yeah, sure. absolutely. And field goals, Frankie. Let's oh, not, let's get into goals. the field goals. We man. had that was probably the funniest thing we did. The field goals. So what we did was we had twenty. We did it from the twenty yard line. So you know the end zone's ten yards. So it's a thirty, technically thirty yards altogether. So made me feel good about myself. Uh, oh yeah, you were great. <laughs> yeah. So there was ten of us. We had uh, each person. We obviously warmed up and tried to tried a few practice kicks. We each got three kicks again from the twenty. So. <laughs> <laughs> out of the 10 of us, out of 30 field goal attempts, okay, we only had two people get one in, okay? And you're looking at both of them. I was three for three. He was one for three. Every other person missed. So we were four out of 30. This is from the 20-yard right, line, okay? Right, So what we did was we had to move closer, except me and Keith, we obviously were for a second. So right. that was pretty cool. And Keith did it. Tell him why. <laughs> so the year before, <laughs> I finished last place in his league, and uh, let's just roll the video. Oh, there he is. Yep, he, looks the so, dress. he looks so pretty in that dress. Yeah, look at that. Kevin Goskowski. But ready? Hey, watch this form, Frankie. Bow! Oh, I, ta I taught you everything you know. Yeah, you did, man. <laughs> but hey, you didn't teach me how to do it in a dress. That I had to figure that so out. We got a couple other clips we're going to show you guys. We got a couple pictures, like a couple little things. Right. But um, Frank, you got to they got to give me some props, man. That, that was dress sick. was uncomfortable, dude. I mean, not like I know what dresses are supposed to feel like. That looks <laughs> nice and airy. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was probably the funniest one. Some of the some of the guys trying to kick these things were hilarious, and it was like, you know, Mike, I love you, Mike Whitney, man. But that was hilarious the way you kicked that oh, football, that dude. Crazy. I wish we had a better clip. We I have a, know, a we slight had the kick, clip. but we had such a good one. It he was ran so up grainy, fast, dude. and then he got so close, it was like he slowed down to like a pitta patta. It was just like it was just, the best way to put it. He's like he's running so hard, and then he like almost took like two little baby steps, and then kicked it. Like you were well, Josh <laughs> sent us the video, but it was just way too grainy, yeah. dude. You couldn't even see who it's it was. Tough, yeah, but I mean, you could try to put it out there. Maybe people yeah. get an idea. But so that was a fun. That was probably the funnest one we did. And then uh, two years ago, we did axe throwing. That, that was, was pretty cool. cool. I think yep. I might have a picture or two on that. And then this past season, we did Fantasy Football Olympics, we called it. So we did cornhole. We did, like, target practice. And Keith, Keith uh, has the net, and we'll show you pictures of that. We the had, accuracy had three football different net. Uh, targets for your football throws. Yep. And then we had, a, um, like, I don't know, 25-yard chip shot for golf. So we, and we added up all the, the points. And it, when I say golf, it's in my yard, and I had this, this hole that could fit a basketball. And it's a pretty good-sized hole, maybe a little bit bigger than a basketball, not a golf hole. But I actually chipped it and it bounced a few times and I actually got it. And this is like 25 yards and I, I'm terrible at golf. My yeah. other two shots, again, we had three shots each, went this way and that way and yeah. it was just not even close. I didn't do good at that, but I think what earned me the second pick in your draft last year was the football net. The football net was I hit, great. I, I think I hit like five or six oh, in the I, net, dude. I loved the football net. I thought that was great. I, I actually, I either got first or second when, I think I got first at your house. Yeah, I got first at your house. So we used the football net at Keys the year before. Again, we'll show you a picture. It's, it's, a, it's just a net with three different holes, you know, one, two, and three for points. And uh, I ended up having the most points at your house um, and had the first pick. And then this year, I think I ended up getting the first pick in my league and Justin Jefferson got hurt, but... Yeah, it was a lot of fun doing that. I, yeah, I, really I mean, did. the football net, which actually, here's, here's a video of this if you guys want to oh, yeah. wonder you what got that it right is. Here. Yeah, great. So there's your boy. Oh, what a throw. Bing, oh, right in the net. And then the second one. Throwing him out. 
not in the net, but right below That's it. That's close. Elliot Wolf, call my man. He's ready. Yeah, Jacoby. Yeah. Sorry, bro. <laughs> yeah, let Drake sit, man. I'm 32. I'm a seasoned veteran. He's ready. He's ready for it. And then, like he was talking about, actually, yeah. here's the video of the uh, of the golf. We got our boy Justin here on the putt putt. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yep. You can kind of see where the guy's standing in the back there, yeah, but it's not everybody know, watching. That's gotta be like 20, 25 yards, I'd say at least. Fr yards looking nice, Frankie. Yeah, it looks pretty clean right there. <laughs> you can't see all those lines. You can't see those. Lines, you can't see those. Yeah, I did a good job mowing yes, that day. Yes, you did. <laughs> this, yeah. year, this year we're doing archery for my league. My actually, yep. my neighbor put out a bunch of free stuff and it had bow and arrow and like an, an archery target and i'm ready for that it, it'll be fun i mean it's like whatever we, and we're we, gonna have some clips on the next show oh for we're that. definitely gonna film yeah. that well we, my league this year we're doing cornhole everybody's cornhole, throwing yep. eight bags uh that's gonna be next saturday so yeah i'm having everybody throw eight bags tally up the scores determine you pick that way there's so yeah there's so many ways to do it i mean i've seen people do like madden you know and just simulate the league everyone gets a team you simulate it whoever is you know first second third fourth etc that's, that's pretty, pretty cool, cool. too and all, all you the can bet on the greyhounds like you, there's so many things you can do it's it's just really cool or there's uh sometimes like non-challenge ones you can do which i did last year in my league frank where we had that's 12 right. cups that's i'm in right. a 12-man league then basically you throw the ping pong ball wherever it lands that's your pick your boy got number one pick last year but nobody that's luck i don't like it i don't like it <laughs> don't like it I, so like five guys went all brick, brick, brick. And then I got up there, nothing but net. Call me Curry, okay? And what'd you get? Call me Caitlin Clark. I got like the ninth, tenth pick, like one of the worst picks you can get. And I'm like, I'm the first one to get it in, and I got like the terriblest pick. Frank, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I dude. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just thought it was changing up a little bit, but yeah. I mean, nah, it was, I, it was I, cool. It was fun. I like the skill set ones like you were saying where you put your skills to the test, man, see if you can earn that well, top pick. It's just, a, like you said, it's it's a fun way to do it. It doesn't even, like like the casino, there's no, it's all luck. Just yeah. like you're thinking, you don't know where it is. Oh, We exactly. had the girls come and mix it around or whatever. But at you least you're getting some money on. out of that, bro. Like my ping pong challenge, you weren't getting no money out of that. Well, I lost <laughs> 20 bucks. I think I had like 18 cents left on my spin, so. I got a bad pick that year, too, but yeah. it is what it is. But, dude, looking forward to fantasy football, man. We are literally your draft tomorrow, my draft next week, and then the following week, we got the first NFL week, week one, yeah. baby. Yep, it's going to be great. And I'm looking at this is like my favorite time of Same year. Same here, bro. It's like a lot of fun. It's like the weather's getting perfect. Like, it's just Love everything. the fall, dude. And football is back. It's just like the best time for My sure. first wedding anniversary is in the fall, man. Oh, you you yeah. can't beat the fall, brother. I love it. Love it, dude. Can't have fall without football. I love it. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to yes, be a fun sir. year. So, I draft tomorrow. We'll have some clips. Uh, well, mine is, and then Keith's is next week. So, when we come back, we'll be – probably won't be till the following Thursday. You don't miss us too much, but <laughs> – One week, man. Yeah, this is great. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. Um, Frank, I, I don't mean to bother you again, dude, but do you hear that? I do. I, I don't know what that is, though. That, it sounds like a bird or something. That, it sounds like a... Like a my, my phone's ringing. Hello? Ooh, what do you got? Uh, We're filming, me, man. Let me put it on speaker. <laughs> who, who is this? That's creepy. Tell them Eric Draven sends his regards. Eric Draven? The, the, the Crows promo. just, yeah, yeah the, the remakes of Yeah, movie. that's right. <laughs> so that makes sense, but uh, why are you calling me? Is that gasoline I smell? Nah, that's not gasoline. Frank just farted. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. So, why are there crows on the desk, dude? <laughs> Frank, I'm uh, out of here, man. From title town to your town, stay wicked, piss from, everybody. From apparently the crow's nest to your nest. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>